Lockheed Martin's mysterious hypersonic aircraft known as SR-72 may have gotten another shred of confirmation that it actually exists and appears to be continuing its march towards service. In today's video, we will discuss the promising capabilities of this aircraft and take a closer look at the facts that support its existence. In 2006, Lockheed Martin initiated the development of a hypersonic successor to the Blackbird. The program continued in secrecy for seven years before being formally announced to the public in 2013. This announcement was accompanied by a media campaign that included several interviews with Lockheed Martin's hypersonics program manager and the engineer who led the effort for the previous seven years, Brad Leland. Leland was also quoted in a Lockheed Martin press release, which has since been taken down as stating that hypersonic aircraft, coupled with hypersonic missiles, could penetrate denied airspace and strike at nearly any location across a continent in less than an hour. The advancement of speed will be the next significant development in aviation, and it will be necessary to counter emerging threats in the next several decades. The technology would be a significant disruptive force in the theatre, analogous to the impact of stealth on the battle space in the present era. This new high-speed aircraft would employ a previously unfielded type of engine that, in essence, constituted two, or potentially three, distinct jet engine types in one. As Leland described it, the new propulsion system was based on a conventional turbofan engine, either the Pratt and Whitney F-100 or the General Electric F-110. The turbofan engine would enable the aircraft to take off from a standstill and accelerate to supersonic speeds, comparable to those of a conventional fighter aircraft. However, as the jet approached Mark III, the second half of the engine would then engage, providing additional thrust. The second half of the engine is purported to be a dual-mode ramjet that relies on the substantial pressure of inflowing air at supersonic speeds and a variable inlet design to create intentionally placed shock waves for compression. Consequently, this engine design could propel an aircraft well beyond the SR-71's record-setting top speed of Mach 3.2, beyond the hypothetical hypersonic barrier at Mach 5, and potentially even beyond the fictional Mach 10 speed of the Dark Star aircraft, which was notably constructed in collaboration with the Skunk Works. This type of engine design, which has since become more prevalent, is referred to as a turbine-based combined cycle, TBCC, engine. While Lockheed Martin was responsible for the aircraft's overall design, Aerojet Rocketdyne was tasked with developing the engine. The aircraft was originally conceived as a Mach 6 Plus aircraft, but from the outset, it was designated as an Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance ISR asset with strike capabilities. This signifies that the aircraft would be capable of carrying a variety of payloads, including munitions for the engagement of ground targets. While Leland emphasized the potential use of this novel aircraft as a hypersonic missile launch platform, it is now more probable that this hypersonic aircraft will be deployed with lower-cost munitions that have been designed specifically for deployment at hypersonic speeds. The hypersonic missiles currently under development in the United States encompass a range of designs, yet they are collectively regarded as being significantly more costly than conventional ordnance. The immense pressure and heat inherent to high-speed flight present significant engineering challenges, though they are not insurmountable, when attempting to drop or launch a weapon at such extreme speeds. The viability of launching air-to-air -air missiles at speeds exceeding Mach 3 was demonstrated by Lockheed with the YF-12, which is a weaponized variant of the SR-71. However, the SR-72's purported strike capabilities are not the sole significant issue. The aircraft's capacity to furnish expeditious intelligence regarding any target on Earth would be of paramount importance for the United States in a 21st century conflict, particularly in the vast expanse of the Pacific. 
Despite the popular perception that satellites provide uninterrupted global surveillance, the reality is that the number of satellites in orbit is insufficient to achieve the desired level of coverage. Furthermore, the predictability of satellite orbits makes it relatively straightforward to conceal information from them. This has driven the funding of a long list of modern intelligence-gathering aircraft, ranging from the MQ-1 Predator to highly exotic airframes whose official designations are not yet known, such as the Northrop Grumman-sourced RQ-180. Nevertheless, despite the considerable investment made by the United States in the development of spy planes over recent decades, all of the aforementioned platforms fly at subsonic speeds. This has the consequence of making the timely gathering of intelligence dependent on both locality and the availability of the relevant airframe. The MQ-9, for instance, may be capable of remaining airborne for more than 24 hours, but with a standard cruising speed of just 230 miles per hour, it would require over an hour to traverse the distance between New York and Boston, and over 10 hours to traverse the distance between the two cities in a cross-country flight. In contrast, a hypersonic aircraft capable of reaching Mach 6, or approximately 4,600 miles per hour, could traverse the distance between New York and Boston in less than five minutes and complete the same journey between New York and Los Angeles in approximately half an hour. As previously documented in June 2017, Rob Weiss, the Executive Vice President and General Manager for Skunk Works at Lockheed Martin, informed the media that the testing phase of the turbine-based combined cycle hypersonic propulsion system for the SR-72 was complete. He further stated that they were getting close to commencing work on what he described as an SR-72 Flight Research Vehicle, FRV. The single-engine technology demonstrator was purported to be approximately the size of an F-22 Raptor and was designed to showcase the platform's capacity to take off using conventional turbofan power, accelerate to supersonic speeds, and then transition from turbofan power to a highly sophisticated dual-mode scramjet enabling the aircraft to attain maximum speeds exceeding Mach 6. By September 2017, accounts from witnesses who had observed the vehicle in flight began to emerge. These accounts indicated that the vehicle had been seen flying over Palmdale, California, the location of the Skunk Works headquarters. In February 2018, Jack O'Banion, Vice President of Strategy and Customer Requirements in Advanced Development Programs at Lockheed Martin, informed the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics SciTech Forum that the SR-72 FRV was already in flight. He subsequently informed the Wall Street Journal that the aircraft was also agile at hypersonic speeds and that engine starts were reliable. However, just as the SR-72 was becoming a prominent topic of discussion, Russian President Vladimir Putin delivered an address that has since been regarded as the beginning of the modern hypersonic arms race. In this address, he announced the introduction of a number of new Russian weapons, including two different Mach 5 Plus missile systems. Following the speech, Lockheed Martin removed any references to SR-72 program from its website. Additionally, the company ceased providing quotes from its senior executives, who had previously been vocal about the program's progress. Despite this, the company continued its operations as though the SR-72 had never been a part of its development pipeline. In the second quarter of 2022, Lockheed reported a pre-tax loss of $225 million on a classified aeronautics program that had recently undergone a comprehensive review. However, three months later, filings by Lockheed Martin indicated that the customer for this effort had signed a memorandum of agreement to modify the scope and price of the contract. This suggests that a contract is in place, presumably a fixed price incentive fee contract, and that Lockheed Martin is unlikely to bear the burden of these cost overruns independently. 
Given the continued budgetary overruns, which now total $335 million, it is reasonable to conclude that the program's overall budget is significantly higher. However, this is not the only indication that a highly classified aircraft is being developed for the US Air Force. Indeed, there is considerable evidence to suggest that this program has progressed beyond the development and pre-production tooling stages and is likely to be entering a full production phase. In particular, there is evidence of the construction of a substantial new production facility at the Skunk Works headquarters in Palmdale, California, which has been designated Building 648. Additionally, a significant number of new personnel have been hired for the purpose of manufacturing a product within the facility. The construction of Building 648 was completed in August 2021. Lockheed Martin has described the substantial 215,000 square foot structure as an intelligent, flexible factory with the objective of reducing the considerable investments of time and capital required to establish new production lines. This is accomplished, Lockheed Martin explained, through the use of advanced artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and large, broadly capable robots known as Combined Operation Bolting and Robotic Auto Drill Systems, or COBRAs. As Skunk Works revealed at the time, they had already demonstrated the functionality of these new robots in the production of the technology testbed that would lead to the X-59 Quiet Supersonic Transport Test Aircraft, or QUEST. However, based on other publicly available information, it can be inferred that Skunk Works is engaged in a broader range of activities than the construction of one or two technology demonstrators within Building 648. From February 2018, when the SR-72 was no longer in the public eye, until September 2023, Lockheed Martin expanded the size of the Advanced Development Programs Unit, a subsidiary of their aeronautics division, by 75%. Over a five-year period, the company hired more than 2,300 new employees, with hundreds of openings still advertised on their careers page. Additionally, Statements from Skunk Works officials indicate that low-rate production of a particular item is currently underway. In 2022, Skunk Works General Manager John Clark informed the press that low-rate production was occurring within the Skunk Works. We are engaged in a multitude of endeavors, and I am at liberty to state that without divulging the precise nature of these activities, which could potentially give rise to security concerns. Indeed, low-rate production activities are underway in Palmdale. Clark proceeded to state that, although the Skunk Works is renowned for its rapid prototyping capabilities, the secretive organization has historically served as a manufacturing center for advanced airframes, such as the SR-71 and F-117. This reiterates that his team at Skunk Works is not solely dedicated to fielding exotic prototypes. Rather, they are also responsible for developing high-end operational aircraft. I've really tried to reinforce that mindset that we do more than just a one-off X-plane, Clark said. It has given me a lot more freedom with the aeronautics executive leadership team to let me grow Skunk Works the way that it historically would have been grown. Rumors about the Lockheed Martin SR-72 program may have once been dismissed as nothing more than a flight of fancy in the aviation community, but in the years since then, a lot of evidence has emerged to suggest that the SR-72 does exist. And what do you think of this aircraft? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to stay connected. And thanks for watching.